How's it going folks? I'm Des with Desfit and this is the brand new Garmin Venue 3. Updating their previous generation Venue 2 and Venue 2 Plus smartwatches with their latest generation heart rate sensor as well as some brand new features that we haven't yet seen before. Now what's interesting about the Venue 3 is that it's not just about having a whole bunch of smartwatch features which it does have like a built-in microphone and speaker for calls as well as being able to access a voice assistant. Garmin's actually added a lot of features on the recovery, health, and wellness side of things which not only makes it a good complement to your smartphone but a lot of those needed features bring fitness, health, and wellness kind of all together, like improvements to body battery, more recovery feedback like heart rate variability tracking, more training feedback, as well as a new sleep coach. So in today's video, we're going to go over everything new with the new Venue 3, including what's new with the hardware, how it differs from the Venue 2 and the Venue 2 Plus. We'll go over all those new health, wellness, and fitness features. And I'll also be diving really deep into the accuracy, especially in regards to sports like running, weight training, cycling, as well as rowing. And if you do happen to find the information this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button down below. It's a small thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel out quite a bit, and I appreciate it. So to backtrack just a little bit, Garmin had the Venue 2 and the Venue 2S, and then a little bit later on down the road, they released the Venue 2 Plus, which added a microphone and speaker to the mix. And with this new Venue 3 and Venue 3S, it's all together now where there isn't necessarily a Plus version, all the Venue 3s have a microphone and speaker. And then unlike the Venue 2 Plus, which only came in one size, they have both the larger Venue 3 with a 45 millimeter case, and then the smaller Venue 3S with a 41 millimeter case. And this is how both of them look on my 185 millimeter circumference wrist. And for the displays, they went with a whopping 1.4 inch display on the larger Venue 3 with 454 by 454 pixels. And the smaller Venue 3S has a 1.2 inch display with 390 by 390 pixels. So a little bit of a bump when it comes to display size versus the original Venue 2 and Venue 2S, as well as the Venue 2 Plus. But just like before, the displays in the Venue 3s are these gorgeous AMOLED displays with vibrant colors and tons of contrast, which makes watch faces pop, as well as just makes it super nice to look at all throughout the interface, where they do take advantage of all those colors with a bunch of very pretty charts and stuff like that. Now, one drawback with these kinds of displays is that they tend to be a bit power hungry. So when you look at smartwatches with similar kinds of displays, like let's say an Apple watch or a Samsung watch, those watches typically only get around one to three days of battery life before having to recharge them. But this is much different with what Garmin's done with the Venue 3 and the Venue 3S, where these can last for days, like anywhere from four to five days at some of the more power hungry settings, but then all the way up to a week or even more. And this also is an increase from the battery life from the Venue 2s. Now, probably one of the biggest factors when it comes to battery life is if you choose to use the always on display or not. So if you don't use the always on display, what happens here is that when you're not interacting with the watch, the display goes to sleep and then to wake it back up, all you do is either tap on the display, press a button or turn your wrist if you have the wrist gesture mode enabled. And with that sort of mode, you can get up to 10 days on the smaller Venue 3S and then up to 14 days on the larger Venue 3. But then if you choose to use the always on display mode, what happens here is that the display sort of dims when you're not interacting with it. And again, to wake it back up, you'll either tap on the screen, press a button, or turn your wrist. And this works, by the way, for just everyday use as a smartwatch, as well as during activities where the display dims as well. And in this mode, it uses more power, of course, but you can still get up to five days of battery life before having to recharge them. There are, of course, some other factors that play a role in battery life, though, such as how many outdoor activities that you track, and if you choose to use the blood oxygen saturation level tracking. But for my testing, I was basically using it for about an hour long outdoor activity per day on average. And if I wasn't using the SpO2 tracking, I got a solid four, almost five days out of it. And when I did enable the SpO2 tracking for sleep, it was around 3.5, almost four days. Still though, for a display like this, that's quite good compared to some other watches with similar display technology. And then when it comes to battery life or tracking outdoor activities, they say that you can get up to 20 hours of use using their highest accuracy all systems mode on the larger Venue 3, and then up to 15 hours on the smaller Venue 3S. And for my real world testing, on this bike ride here, I started out with 46%, and at the end of this nearly two hour ride, I had 38% remaining. So if we just do the simple math, that means it was using around 4.5% per hour, which translates into over 22 hours of battery life. So their battery claims for outdoor activities seems very solid. Oh, and then on the topic of battery life, the Venue 3 comes with a standard Garmin charging cable, which uses USB-C on the other end to plug it into an adapter. And for charging times, it took about an hour and 20 minutes to charge it from nearly empty to full. So to get around the Venue 3, it uses a combination of a touchscreen along with three physical buttons, which is the same as the Venue 2 Plus, where you can use the touchscreen to swipe around to different widgets and scroll through menus and stuff like that. You'll use the upper right hand button as an enter key or to start or pause an activity, and then you use the bottom right hand button as a back button or a lap key during an activity. 
And then the Venue 3 also has a third middle button, and there's a few things that you can do with this. So first up is that if you short press it, it brings up your most recent apps or widgets. So this lists all your most recent apps that you've used in the order that you've used them, versus just swiping through the widgets from the watch face. But another function that the middle button can do is to enable a voice assistant. So if you're on an iPhone, you can call on Siri, and if you're on an Android phone, you can call on Google Assistant or Bixby. But the thing is, there's actually a lot of tricks that you can do here since it can connect to a voice assistant, not just like asking for the weather. So for example, with text messages, you will be able to receive these whether you're on an Android phone or an iPhone, but if you're on an Android phone, you will be able to tap and reply with predetermined messages that you can set up in Garmin Connect. And in addition to that, they also have an on-screen keyboard that you can use to type out your message. But again, this is just on Android. But unfortunately, if you're on an iPhone, you can't tap and quick reply, and that really all has to do with Apple locking down their iMessage functionality to just iPhone. But here's the little trick with an iPhone. You actually can reply to a text message if you're on an iPhone using the voice assistant. And of course, the same thing goes if you're on an Android phone. Text Ray, I wish I had some baguettes. Your message to Ray says, I wish I had some baguettes. Do you want to send it or change it? Send it. Now, what is kind of nice though, is that if you don't necessarily want to use a voice assistant, you don't really have to, and you can actually repurpose that middle button to access a whole bunch of other functions on the watch. And that's with both a short press of the middle button as well as the long press. Oh, and you also can customize the swipe right function on the display, but sadly, I actually didn't see a Tinder function on that list. And then since the Venue 3 does have a built-in microphone and speaker, you'll also be able to take calls from the watch itself as long as your phone is in range. Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and make a call. Call Ray. Calling Raymaker, iPhone. Mr. Dennis, how goes? Oh, pretty good. You're live on camera right now. Say hello. Hello, viewers. I'm also, you're also live to my viewers. Oh, hello. Like how, how many baguettes have you eaten so far today? I haven't eaten none, which is an extreme disappointment at the moment. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but, and uh, you, you sound decent. You sound, uh, I mean, we're watch to watch. I don't know. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, it's totally, it's totally functional at this point, I would say, um, both what I'm hearing from you and also, uh, you know, just hopefully what you're hearing from me. Yeah, totally. No, you're good to go. Can hear you just fine. All right. Take care, dude. Cool. See ya, bye. Now for all those features though, like the voice assistant, the text, as well as calls, you do need to have your phone with you and in range for those to work because the Venue 3 doesn't have cellular capabilities. However, one feature that you can use without your phone nearby is offline music playback with streaming services from Spotify, Amazon Music, as well as Deezer, where you'll be able to download and sync playlists from those providers to your watch so you can listen to music with a pair of Bluetooth headphones without having to have your phone with you on your run or your ride. And this will all be done over Wi-Fi. And what's interesting too here is that you actually can listen to music using the onboard speaker. Now, it is a speaker that's on a watch, of course, so it's a small speaker, so the quality is probably what you can expect. But hey, you can do that in a pinch, I suppose. And then in addition, you also can download purchase music like MP3s to your watch itself by plugging it into your computer. And then you can also control the music that's playing on your phone if you're paired and in range. So those are all the smartwatch related features as well as the hardware. But now let's talk about everything new on the health, wellness, and fitness side of things. And there's actually a lot to cover here. So just like before, the Venue 3 can track your steps throughout the day, it tracks your calories burned, it tracks your heart rate, it tracks your blood oxygen saturation levels, it tracks your respiration rate, it tracks your stress levels, and it also tracks your intensity minutes, which are basically how much time that you're spending doing vigorous activity throughout the day. And then just like before, it also tracks your body battery, which is basically an indication of your current energy level based on your activities, recovery, as well as sleep. But they've made some big changes and improvements to body battery where you're now given a lot more detail about how your battery is being impacted by your activities, rest period, as well as sleep. Like it now literally shows you when you are active, let's say during a workout, it also shows you rest periods during the day, and also shows your sleep in this nice scrollable chart. But not only that, they're now giving you a lot more detail where they're breaking out all these events and literally giving you an exact number of how each event either drained your body battery like a workout or increased it, let's say for a rest period as well as sleep. And all these factors were already being used for body battery before, but they're now just providing a lot more detail into each and any specific event that's impacting your body battery throughout the day. And yet another thing that they've done here too is that they've added alerts throughout the day for these sort of events. Like here, I had a longer period during the morning where I was kind of chilling out and it alerted me that it added to my body battery score. And then there's also this daily summary kind of prompt that you'll get a couple hours before bedtime, which gives you an indication of what kind of day that you've had. So like here, it says that I have plenty of exercise, so I should probably start winding down and make sure to get some good sleep and recovery. 
And speaking of energy levels and how to actually replenish them, something else new with the Venue 3 is that it's now able to track maps. And this is something that all of us have been wanting for years, where other brands like, let's say, Fitbit have had this for quite some time, but now it's here with the Venue 3. And as you can imagine, naps do play a role in your body battery, so any tracked nap will show up here. And in terms of tracking naps, they say that it should automatically be able to track any nap that's at least five minutes or longer. However, what's really, really cool here is that you can't actually manually log a nap. And how you do this is just by entering the sleep mode on your watch, which manually logs a nap. And what you'll also notice here too is that it prompts you with a timer when you do so during the day. And then yet another new feature they're rolling out with the Venue 3 is a new sleep coach feature. And what this does is that it suggests the amount of time that's optimal to sleep that night based on your sleep history, activity history, heart rate variability, as well as any naps that you've taken throughout the day. And for the baseline sleep target, this is all based on your age, and then it takes in those other factors to suggest the amount of time that you potentially need. Now, what's interesting about this feature too is that it can change throughout the day. So like here, I started out with a nine hour suggestion based on the previous night's sleep, but then after a nap, it reduced my need. But then conversely, after a workout later that day, it bumped my sleep need up since I had a hard workout. And then one more thing that's sort of related to sleep is that the Venue 3 also comes with Garmin's morning report feature, which gives you an overview of a bunch of things that you likely wanna know first thing in the morning, like your sleep quality, your recovery status, your HRV status, your body battery, as well as a bunch of other stats that you can customize. And as as I alluded to just with morning report, the Venue 3 also comes with a new recovery visor as well as HRV status. And this is actually a feature that was originally launched on some of Garmin's higher end watches. So heart rate variability has been increasing in popularity in recent years, especially amongst athletes as a good indicator of how your body is responding to training as well as how well it's recovering. And another sleep and energy level related feature that they're bringing to the Venue 3 is Garmin's jet lag advisor. And the aim with jet lag advisor is to give you guidance as you're traveling across many time zones where it suggests times to sleep, when to be awake, when to take naps and even nutrition. And I haven't had a chance to test it on the Venue 3 quite yet, but I already did a super in-depth video of how it all works on Garmin's Mark Watch. So go ahead and check out that video once you're done over here if you want more details. And yet another bit of feedback they have now are workout benefits. So what you get now when you finish your workout is how that particular type of workout is impacting your fitness. So for instance, with this run that I did, which was at a higher intensity, it suggests that it's improving my fitness. Oh, and that also gives an indication of how it impacted my body battery as well. And the feedback that it's gonna provide is obviously gonna be dependent on what kind of workout that you're doing, as well as the intensity level that you're doing around. And here's some other examples of some other workout benefits that I saw. And then another new feature coming to the Venue 3 is support for cycling power meters as well as smart bike trainers. And this does make a lot of sense since indoor bike training has really taken off in recent years with smart bike trainers as well as smart bikes becoming increasingly popular. And for a quick primer, cycling power meters basically measure the amount of force that you're exerting down in the pedals. And this can be measured from a pair of power meter pedals, power meter cranks, as well as smart bike trainers and smart bikes. And then on the watch itself, during your training session, you'll be able to see your current power output, average power for the entire workout, as well as your power zone. And for the data that you'll get after your workout, if you're using a cycling power meter, you'll get your average and maximum power, your 20 minute average maximum power, your normalized power, as well as metrics derived from power, like your intensity factor, as well as TSS. And then on the sports and fitness side of things, the Venue 3, just like the Venue 2 and Venue 2 Plus, can track tons of different kinds of sports with all the more common stuff like running and cycling, both indoors and outdoors. There's plenty of pool swimming, plenty of gym-based profiles, including weight training and high-intensity interval training, as well as outdoor recreation profiles like skiing and snowboarding. But they've also added some new features for wheelchair users. Now, as you can imagine, there may be different metrics and data points that a wheelchair user may want to collect, like tracking daily pushes. In addition, they've also built in specific algorithms and insights for different sports and workouts that are specific for wheelchair users. And if you do want more information on these new features, I'll have a link down in the description below where you can find out more details. Now, when it comes to how accurate the Venue 3 is in tracking sports, let's go ahead and start out with GPS accuracy for tracking outdoor activities. And the Venue 3 gets a new satellite chipset, which can now access five different satellite systems. So a couple more than the previous Venue 2 Plus. Now the satellite chipset that they chose for the Venue 3 isn't a multi-band chipset like the ones that are found on Garmin's more higher end sports focused watches. But even so, I wouldn't actually be all that concerned there because even though this is just a single frequency chipset, it performs extremely well. Like on this run here, it was right in line with the other watches I was using in regards to total distance. And for the finer detail of the GPS tracks, again, very good here where it was very much in line with the actual path I was traveling as well as the other watches that have a more powerful satellite chipset. 
And then for a longer example, here's a road ride, and again, very close to the other devices in regards to the total distance. It did report just a little bit more elevation gain than the other devices, as well as the corrected elevation figure from Strava, but not like crazy off or anything. And don't worry, I have another example for you here in just one second with mountain biking with a lot more elevation gain where it did great. Anyhow, for the finer details of the GPS tracks on that ride, it was super crispy throughout the ride, where on all the straight sections, it was nice and solid, and on all the corners and curves, it did a great job. And you can see that it was really good at tracking all the corners cleanly. What I also wanted to zoom in on was right here as I went through this tunnel where devices will obviously lose their satellite signal momentarily, but the Venue 3, it did a really great job at picking back up the satellite signal after I exited the tunnel. Now for the hardest test though, now let's go ahead and check out some mountain biking with a lot of heavy tree cover as well as a lot of switchbacks where we can see a lot more variance when it comes to accuracy. But as we can see, the Venue 3 did great here in tracking the total distance compared to the other devices that have a more powerful chipset, like really close in fact, but you may notice that the Wahoo Element Bolt V2 I was using was a a little bit under. And if we take a look at the GPS tracks, this tells a bit more to the story where the element bolt that's in light blue, well, it kind of cuts a lot of these corners, which results in an overall lower total distance. But for the Venue 3, it's super solid here. And we're talking about some very tight switchbacks where it's right in line with the trail. There's literally not one spot where I could see anything wrong. So I really wouldn't be too concerned that the Venue 3 doesn't have a multi-band satellite chipset and only uses a single band chipset. As you can see from the results, it's very good, even in some more challenging environments. And then really quick before we get into hardware accuracy, I also wanted to go over how well the Venue 3 did at estimating distances running indoors on the treadmill, and it did really great on its first run. And what is nice too is that at the end of the run, they do give you the ability to calibrate and adjust your distance to the treadmill. And when it comes to heart rate accuracy, the Venue 3 comes with Garmin's latest 5th generation Elevate heart rate sensor, which they recently just released with their Phoenix 7 Pro and Epix Pro sports watches. And this latest generation sensor is definitely their most accurate yet, and I've gotten some really good results from the other watches that have the same sensor. And I actually have a Another video where I tested against the Apple Watch, and that video could be worth a look once you're done over here, but before that, let's go ahead and see how the Venue 3 did. So starting out with the steady state indoor bike ride, which is basically the kind of test I use as a baseline for heart rate sensors, and well, that's pretty great out of the Venue 3, so I think we can just go ahead and move on to something harder. So for something harder, here's some intervals, and as you can see, the Venue 3 did a fantastic job here tracking all the quick changes in heart rate extremely well, where it was super responsive on all the sets. Now, taking it outside for some road biking, this is where we start to introduce more variables for these kinds of sensors to deal with, like bumps in the road as well as vibrations from the handlebars, which can affect the accuracy. But the Venue 3, again, did great here, like nearly perfect, and we have to zoom in really closely to see any sort of variation. Like here, it was just a few seconds behind to track the fallen heart rate, but that's totally to be expected with an optical heart rate sensor versus a chest strap. In fact, that's exactly what we see from the optical heart rate sensor that I was wearing on my arm that's in green. But realistically, this was amazingly close to the external heart rate sensors and exactly what I want to see. And then when it comes to running, on this treadmill run here, that's nearly picture perfect. But on this run outside, I did see a couple more bobbles out of it right here and right here. Very minor in the whole scheme of things, and what's interesting is that I also saw a little bit of variation from the optical heart rate sensor I was wearing on my arm. Now, all those activities so far are generally on the easier side of things for wrist-based optical heart rate sensors to track, but now let's move on to some harder activities like mountain biking, weight training, as well as some rowing. So here's a rowing workout that I did, and with rowing, you're holding onto a handle which can sometimes affect blood flow, but the Venue 3 did a fantastic job here for this kind of activity. And then with mountain biking, this is a very hard activity for a wrist-based optical heart rate sensor to track, and that's due to a lot of gripping onto the handlebars as well as a lot of rough terrain which can make the watch bounce around on the wrist. But the Venue 3 did a pretty respectable job here. This is the type of activity where you won't see as accurate results as some of the previous examples, but overall, this is pretty good. What you'll notice is that for the first half of the ride, which was mainly just climbing, it was essentially perfect. Where you start to see it wander though are on the downhill sections over rough terrain, which is what can happen with these kinds of sensors. And then finally with weight training, this is the other activity other than mountain biking, which is super tough for wrist-based optical heart rate sensors due to gripping onto dumbbells as well as a lot of varying arm movement. But this isn't a terrible result from the Venue 3 for this kind of activity. At the beginning, it did take a few minutes to kind of get a lock on a heart rate, but after that, it did line up pretty well with the trends in heart rate on most of the sets. It had a little bit of an issue here tracking the rise in heart rate and then a little bit of a spike here, but for most of the sets it was pretty good, and it also did a pretty decent job with the high intensity intervals at the end. Although you can see it's just a few seconds behind to track the fallen heart rate, but again, that's kind of being expected comparing an optical heart rate sensor to a chest strap. But to wrap things up, we should also probably talk about a few things that aren't on the Venue 3, and I suppose the first one we should talk about is ECG. Now, when the Venue 2 Plus first came out, there's no mention of ECG, and then later on down the road, it was announced once it got regulatory approval. And 
And that's the thing, a feature like ECG is kind of a tricky thing since it does require regulatory approval. So while it appears that the Venue 3 does have the necessary hardware for such a feature, there's no mention of it at this time. So basically, don't necessarily buy this watch in hopes that it will get that feature because nothing's necessarily guaranteed. But there actually are two other things that could be added without having to jump through hoops though, and those are gonna be wrist-based running power as well as a VO2 max for cycling. The Venue 3 will calculate your VO2 max for running, and this will be calculated by running outdoors for about 10 minutes. Now for cycling VO2 max, you need a cycling power meter, at least with watches that will calculate this for you, like Garmin's more sports-focused watches like Forerunners and Phoenixes. But unfortunately, the Venue 3 for some reason doesn't necessarily provide this, even though a big upgrade with the Venue 3 is that it can support cycling power meters. But other than that though, the Venue 3 is a really great update to the Venue 2 and the Venue 2 Plus, and they basically brought all the features from both watches into one. And I have to say that I really like all the improvements that they have from both the recovery as well as the wellness side of things, which can be an overlooked part of training. Being able to know your heart rate variability is great. All those improvements to body battery, showing how different factors throughout the day contribute to your energy levels, as well as the sleep coach. All those things are really great to see. Another big surprise for me though was the support for cycling power meters and what's interesting about this is that it starts to blur the lines a little bit more between this and the Foreigner 265 which happens to be right around the same price so it may make it hard to choose between the Venue 3 and the 265 but don't worry if you are trying to decide between those two I've got you covered with a full in-depth comparison of those two watches which I'll have coming out maybe in just like a day or two after this video. Anyhow if you found the information in this video to be useful do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos just like this that are coming soon. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.